The next step in this space race is to colonize Mars, which entails traveling to the Red Planet and establishing a permanent presence there. However, let's not sugarcoat the situation. Transporting people to Mars is not a simple endeavor. The moon's dark side is the furthest humans have ventured into space, which is only about 400,000 kilometers away. The process of getting to Mars is a lot more complicated than that. This journey could take several months or even years and would require the human race to overcome several difficult technological obstacles. If we use the technology we have available now, we estimate it would take between 20 and 30 years to get to Mars. Is it possible for us to reduce this time with the advancement of technology? A resounding yes is the correct response. When it comes to Mars, however, there is a rationale behind the fact that we have not conducted any exploration on the Red Planet and that only a select number of settlers have traveled there. A trip to Mars is going to be incredibly challenging because there are a lot of obstacles lurking in the vast reaches of space. For many years, the concept of humans making the trip to Mars has existed solely in science fiction, but that is starting to change. NASA and SpaceX are the two major players in this endeavor, and both are up to the task of overcoming the many obstacles that need to be dealt with before a crewed mission to Mars can be launched. They have developed a close working relationship while collaborating on missions to the International Space Station. However, they have divergent perspectives on how a crewed mission to Mars should be carried out. While NASA is more concerned with precaution and security, SpaceX is more open to new ideas and is more willing to take chances. However, to ensure the success of the Journey to Mars project, both organizations acknowledge the importance of working together. NASA and SpaceX may overcome any obstacles in their mission to send humans to Mars if they combine their resources and expertise. The distance that separates Earth and Mars is the first thing that needs to be established before we can calculate how long it will take to get to Mars. Mars is the fourth planet away from the Sun. Mars is also the second planet from Earth in terms of distance. Venus is the closest. However, because both planets orbit the Sun at different speeds, the distance that separates them always shifts. In principle, the distance between Earth and Mars would be at its greatest when Mars was at its perihelion or its point of greatest proximity to the Sun, and Earth was at its most significant distance from the Sun. If this is the case, the distance between the planets is only 33.9 million miles. On the other hand, nothing of the sort has ever been documented in human history. The two planets made their closest recorded approach to one another in 2003, separated by only 34.8 million miles. As a result, the trip to Mars would probably take between 33 and 34 million miles to complete. If you could travel at the speed of light, how long do you think it would take you to get to Mars? It would require Mars to be in its most distant position from Earth. If you left Earth and traveled to Mars at the speed of light in a vacuum, it would take you 12.5 minutes to get there, given the average distance between the two planets, which is 65.4 million kilometers. These calculations are based on the assumption that you are beginning your journey on Earth, and heading directly toward Mars. In reality, the trip would be much longer because you would need to consider the Earth's curvature, the Earth's rotation, and the orbit of Mars around the Sun. All of these factors would make the trip significantly longer. However, if you were traveling at the speed of light, it is still theoretically possible to arrive at Mars in less than one hour, even after considering the aforementioned factors. But for us to travel at the speed of light is not feasible at this time, at least not with the technologies that we have available. But what about the fastest spacecraft that humans have ever designed and built? The New Horizons spacecraft, operated by NASA, can reach speeds of up to 36,000 miles per hour and is considered one of the fastest spacecraft ever designed to travel to the solar system's outer reaches. If such a spacecraft could be used to travel to Mars, the trip would take just 162 days, equivalent to 3,888 hours, given the typical distance between our planet and the Red Planet. On the other hand, Mars would be 289 days away from us when it is at its most distant point. But things get even better when Mars is at its closest possible approach to Earth, as you would then be able to reach the red planet in just 39 days. This would be possible when Mars is in a perigee, its closest possible approach to Earth. However, in 2021, even this record was shattered by NASA's Parker Solar, which continues to shatter its speed records as it approaches the Sun. On November 21, 2015, the spacecraft made its 10th close flyby of our star at a speed of 364,621 miles per hour. As stated in a statement released by NASA, when the Parker Solar Probe approaches the surface of the Sun in December 2024, the spacecraft will be traveling at a speed that is greater than 430,000 kilometers per hour. With the velocity of the Parker Solar Probe, it would take us just 93 hours to reach Mars when it was at its closest approach to the Earth, and it would take just 29 days 
when it was at its farthest distance from the Earth. That is a significant development for all of humanity. The previous estimates we discussed have a problem because they calculate the distance between the two planets using a straight line. This makes the problem difficult to solve. To make it to Mars from Earth, spacecraft must orbit around the Sun and travel directly through it. However, if you want to take the most direct route, you must travel directly through the Sun. Although this does not present a problem when the planets are as close as they can get to one another, it does create another problem when they are on the same side of the Sun. The calculations also assume that the distance between the two planets remains unchanged. This means that if a probe is sent from Earth to Mars when the two planets are at their closest approach to one another, Mars will remain at the same distance away for the entirety of the 39-day journey that the probe makes. The amount of time it takes to get to Mars is determined by several aspects, such as how the planets are arranged in their orbits, and the type of propulsion system utilized. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center estimates that if you had the right components for a launch to Mars, it would take you nine months to arrive on the red planet. On the other hand, because of the relative positions of the planets and several other factors, the average duration is closer to two years. When sending a spacecraft from Earth to Mars, engineers need to figure out the most efficient orbit to take. Their calculations consider the total distance covered, and the amount of fuel saved. They need to calculate where the planet will be when the spacecraft arrives, as opposed to where it is when it leaves Earth, which is analogous to throwing a dart at a moving target. When approaching a new planet at high speed, spaceships must slow down to avoid flying past it and entering orbit around it. The amount of time required to reach Mars is contingent not only on where Earth and Mars are in their respective orbits when a mission is launched, but also on the technological advancements made in propulsion systems. It takes approximately three-eighths of the way around the Sun for Mars to complete one orbit in the nine months it takes to get there. This represents a significant distance for Mars to traveling in its orbit. To ensure that Mars is in the position that you require it to be when you reach the distance of Mars orbit, you will need to make preparations in advance. In practice, this means that you won't be able to start your journey until Earth and Mars are in the right position relative to one another. This occurrence repeats itself once every 26 months. That is to say, there is only one opportunity to launch once every 26 months. It takes approximately nine months to complete the home and transfer technique, which is both the quickest and most efficient method we are aware of for traveling to Mars. Launch windows for this technique appear every 26 months. It would take approximately 21 months to complete a trip around the world. Given the state of our technology, not only would we have to spend thousands of dollars per second just to get to the red planet, but we would also have to give up a significant portion of our payload. This is not to mention the kind of effect that such a long trip would have on human psychology. If we could travel at the same speed as the Parker Solar Probe, then the distance from Earth to Mars would be significantly shorter than it is right now. The Raptor engines that SpaceX is known for producing a tremendous amount of thrust which are currently undergoing development at the company. They intend to replace it with the Raptor 2.0, which will significantly improve over previous Raptor engine versions. However, what sets SpaceX apart from other companies is its rapid reusability, which no other company has achieved as of yet. The Raptor 2 engine is currently being developed and is essential to SpaceX's future. It possesses an enormous power that has been developed using scientific methods and reusability in a manner that has never been seen before. Engineers in the space industry have been working for a very long time to develop something similar to the Raptor engine, but they have never been successful. It will save money and energy, making it possible for enormous spacecraft like the Starship to avoid passing through our atmosphere on their way to Mars. At this point, humanity is headed in the right direction to travel to Mars. What are your thoughts? Will it be possible for humans to establish permanent settlements on Mars during our lifetimes? Share the video with your friends and let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.